Hey there, all you beautiful Texans. Welcome back to The James Show. It's News Talk 820 WBAP now on FM at 93.3. Let's go. Who is enjoying the weather? Who is enjoying it being like 83 degrees outside? And I know it's like September. And when you look at like the calendars that come out of factories and stuff, they have like brown leaves and it looks like fall for September. You and I know here in Texas, we still have like another three weeks of of possible 100 degree temperatures on a normal year. But has this not been the mildest, least hot summer in recent memory? You're not going to see that headline. I just I have a feeling that that has been your observation as well. And what what did we have like two or three days where we actually got above 100? And last year we had like, what was it, 12 days in a row where we got above 105? I think we only beat 105 like once this year. I'm, I'm going to do a little bit of a, a deeper dive into what actually happened with the the climate change over the summer. And I think I'm going to do that on Friday. We're going to have a good segment on that. Uh, I'm just trying to stall because I really don't want to talk to my first guest. It's my least favorite guest. The absolute worst. Welcome, Blonde Kamala, to the James Show. <laughs> Hi, Blonde Kamala. <laughs> I'll start. It's so good to be here with you. This is so fun. <laughs> How are we having fun? Are you just th- that much joy? Is that what's going on? You're just overflowing with joy? We are all about joy, right? (laughs) I guess so. I guess. Uh, So we have the first debate coming up. It's happening next week, a week from today, actually. Now, for the last debate, your predecessor, Joe Biden, he had to go disappear for an entire week to do debate prep. Are y'all going to pull that excuse probably tomorrow or the next day and be like, yeah, she's going to go hide out for a whole week just for air quotes debate prep. Are you going to pull that scam, too? Well, listen, here's the thing. And, and, you know, let me be clear. We are as prepared as, uh, you know, we can possibly uh, be prepared for anything. Right. And, you know, if we don't come up with some excuse to get out of this, (laughs) then we're going to be there. (laughs) Are you going to ask for any more rule changes between the the cackling? Do you have any more rule change requests that are going to come down the line? Well, you know, uh, you know, our team is is working on some of the things that you know we we think should be just automatic. You know, I you know I I think that I should have Tim up there with me. You know, I mean, why not, right? <laughs> no, 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 no. You can't have Tim up there at the debate. You got to do this by yourself. They, they told you that, right? You have to do this by yourself. Wait, what? No, <laughs> right? Listen, can't, hold on. I, I I'm I'm going to speak to my team and. Uh, you know, um, we're going to we're going to do some things. Well, you know, it's going to be live like we can't record it in advance and, and go edit it out. Did they tell you that part, too? OK, listen, here's the thing. Uh, n- uh, nobody informed me uh, uh, of, of any of these things. And this is the first that I'm hearing of this. And we can't do this. <laughs> It's going to be a no. It's going to be a no. I suddenly I feel very ill right now. <laughs> All right. Well, that would be breaking news if Kamala Harris, uh, blonde Kamala, is backing out of the de- debate on our uh, show here. So uh, we'll, we'll we'll keep an eye on that. See if we can confirm that after the interview. Uh, what have you been doing for debate prep thus far, blonde Kamala? Well, listen, we we do a lot of different things in order to be as prepared as possible for any line of of questioning. And, uh, you know, I I won't be able to apparently uh, let let, uh, Donald Trump know that I am speaking, um, apparently. So that's unfortunate. But uh, listen, we we have lots of things to talk about, um, particularly joy. We're going to be talking about all of the joy that we're going to be bringing to um, America and Americans. And that's that's what we're going to be doing. Okay, (laughs) but you didn't you didn't say anything. It was that there wasn't anything even to respond to. Uh, How about this? Let me try this. Uh, uh, Blonde Kamala, I hear you've changed your position on the wall. Did I hear that you're talking about actually building some of the border wall? Should you get uh, I I would say back in office, but you're already in office. Are are you pro wall now? Listen, full stop. I have always been um, for the border wall. Right. I've said this all along. Uh, I've been saying no tax on tips as well. Right. And, uh, you know, the, the child tax credit, all of these things, they were all my ideas. 
uh, I have been saying them from the beginning, and I don't really know what else to tell you, okay? Okay. Uh, here in Texas, we have our attorney general that is actually uh, investigating some organizations for attempting to register illegals to vote. Uh, the critics are calling this a hoax. This isn't happening. What do you say? Is this a real concern or, or is this just part of some right wing conspiracy? Oh, listen, it's those crazy, weird right wingers. You know what I'm saying? Really the weird. Thing is, Super weird. Re- they're so weird. They're so weird, James. So weird, right? <laughs> yeah, do the laugh. Stall for a little bit. All right, next question. Uh, when are you going to do a press conference? Uh, you still haven't gone out in front of uh, reporters and taken questions. You know, anything live, anything unscripted, anything unedited. We're, we're still waiting for that to happen. Is it, is that going to happen? Well, you know, a lot of things happen, right? And when things happen, they occur, And when things occur and happen, um, they are things that exist within the realm of existence. And and that is what we plan to do, right? Uh, Exist. Okay? That is the worst answer you have ever given, Blonde Kamala. When things exist, they happen. What was that? That was good. Elsa Kurt, (laughs) turn your chair around and and be Elsa Kurt for a second. Uh, What are you doing for the debate? Hey, well, getting my popcorn ready for one. And uh, I don't know, you know, I'm always tempted to do like a drinking game with it, but I'd be blind drunk along with the rest of us if we tried that. Yeah, you should be a guest on somebody's show, maybe live tweeted or something. That would be very fun. I am receptive to that. Yes. (laughs) <laughs> All right, let me see if I can get you on our, our afternoon or our evening guy's show, because he's the guy, his show gets bumped, we play the debate, and then he comes in and comments immediately afterwards. You may have to be part of that. You're too good at this. Thank you, Elsa Kurt, for your time again. Thank you. That Thank last, you. That last answer, go listen to that again. That is a master class on the proper <laughs> Kamala Harris impersonation. Fantastic. She should be on Saturday Night Live with that. Saturday Night Live wanted to get some credibility. Uh, adding her would help a whole lot. Ratings would go up. That's for damn sure. Uh, Latest from the campaign trail coming up next on The James Show. News Talk 820 WBAP now on FM at 93.3. Welcome to The James Show. News Talk 820 WBAP now on FM at 93.3. I will be accepting your submissions for hack moves. Whenever you see a hack move, whether it's a tweet on X or is it an X on X? What do we even call that now? Uh, if it's a link to an NBC story or a CNN story, or if it's something that your aunt posts on uh, Facebook, we're going we're gonna to be compiling all the hack moves here because this is the last two months before the election and you need to have your skeptical, cynical hat on for the next two months. And it's a, it's, it's a great time to practice. This is a great time to practice what's true and what's not, what's a lie and what's not, what's believable, what's not, what sources are reliable and which ones are not. I want to start with one of the biggest, most powerful companies on earth, Amazon, run by one of the, I think it's the richest guy is Jeff Bezos. The richest guy kind of changes every once in a while. He's one of the richest guys. And so that cute little uh, device that you have in your house that you can just talk to and it'll answer your questions or play you some music or tell you a story or make fart noises or whatever. Alexa, someone posted a couple of questions back to back to their Alexa. I think you'd be interested in the difference of answers. It's so strange. Alexa, why should I vote for Donald Trump? I cannot provide content that promotes a specific political party or a specific candidate. Alexa, why should I vote for Kamala Harris? While there are many reasons to vote for Kamala Harris, the most significant may be that she is a strong candidate with a proven track record of accomplishment. As the first female vice president, Harris has already broken down a major gender barrier, and her career in politics has been characterized by a commitment to progressive ideals and a focus on helping disenfranchised communities. That sounds like, to me, an in-kind contribution to the Democrat National Committee, the Kamala Harris campaign, whatever super PAC. This is what bothers me about uh, campaign election law. You know, they pass all these laws to get money out of politics, and they have passed thousands of laws to get monies out of politics. And, and you turn around and you look, is, is money out of politics? No, it's not. Well, then what were those laws really for? When we have the Federal Election Commission, when we have the laws that are supposed to, you know, limit the amount of influence moneyed interest can have 
What are they really for? If they're, they're not getting money and interest out of politics, that's for damn sure. Well, I'll answer that. That keeps you from being more powerful. That keeps you from donating too much money. That keeps uh, the candidates who are going to be grassroots, pull it up by the community. It makes it harder for them to actually come up and rise against a machined preferred candidate. You know, it used to be, I, and I, I believe um, some of these laws changed after Reagan when the first time uh, when he was running in the 60s when he ran for governor of California. They didn't have all these laws and all these limits in place. And it bothered people that this guy with no machine, with no history, no political background can just be bankrolled by a handful of his rich friends from Hollywood and get in on the system without being a part of the system. That's what made Reagan such an intriguing candidate. You know, very Donald Trumpish. Didn't spend his whole life in politics. He was a late convert to politics. And so it almost seems like that's that's what's going on the way the laws are written now. You either have to be in the machine or you're going to have a really hard time catching on. Ask RFK. Ask Ross Perot. I mean, Ross Perot was a billionaire. Could have damn near done it all by himself if he wanted to, to liquidate his entire life can't blame him for not doing so but this uh, this this really hasn't had the effect that it was that you were told it has and then here we are with federal election laws it looks like this what ju- what you just heard that 36 second audio clip that is not an unbiased platform with a unbiased algorithm giving you unbiased answers to questions that is clearly politically biased And so how does this not count? You would have to pay good money to get that message out to the American people if you didn't have the assistance of the biggest, most powerful corporations on the planet. And how come almost all these corporations are for Team Blue? When I play Joe Scarborough lying about uh, what's going on, he works for NBC in that part of like Comcast and one of the giant networks. You know, if you agree with all these people, if you agree with the the mainstream thought of all these talking heads and these politicians and these corporations, doesn't that bother you that you're also told that these evil corporations are screwing over the little guy and gaming the system to get ahead? Well, so what should who should you vote for? Well, whoever the corporations are telling you to vote for. Really? You don't you don't you don't feel a cognitive dissonance there? You don't feel a cognitive dissonance that when you look at like the top 10, 20 billionaires in the world, like 18 of them are team blue. And the exception to the rules, wouldn't they be the rebels? Wouldn't they be the freedom fighters? Wouldn't they be the odd man out speaking truth to power or whatever the goofy phrases that get used are? Let's give you another uh, example here. Let's do that morning show. Donald Trump was explaining, you know, they, they take clips out of him and act like he can't talk properly. No, he's just weaving, right? So he was explaining this and then he gets mocked on morning show. I do the weave. You know what the weave is? I'll talk about like nine different things and they all come back brilliantly together. And it's like, and friends of mine that are like English professors, they say, it's the most brilliant thing I've ever seen. (laughs) But the fake news, you know what they say? He rambled. That's not rambling. When you have, what you do is you get off a subject to mention another little tidbit, then you get back onto the subject and you go through this and you do it for two hours. And you don't even mispronounce one word. That is Donald Trump telling a crowd in Pennsylvania <laughs> the other day, I just, rambling, <laughs> rambling uh, incoherently. Rambling. Actually, part of a brilliant strategy he calls the weave, Joe. I like the how weave. he sort of, he lays it out like it's from a beautiful mind. Like he's seeing things the, the rest of us don't see and all the pieces of the puzzle yeah. are moving together. The I also weave. love the idea that he famously surrounds himself with English professors from our finest Instant. All right, here's what I love. You guys are criticizing him for being incoherent and speaking funny when you lied for the last four years about uh, President Dementia over there, when you lied and said this Biden, this version of Biden is the best Biden a week before his performance was so poor, you called for him to drop out. You, oh, yeah. Jo- Donald Trump babbles incoherently when the person he's running against is known for her word salad. When it's so bad, she's not even doing public appearances. She's not doing press conferences. She's not doing long form interviews. She's not sitting there for two hours speaking at a time off the cuff. But Donald Trump is the one that has a problem speaking coherently. Not Joe Biden, who always already had to drop out. He was so incoherent. Or Kamala Harris, who hasn't done any long form media because she's known for her incoherence as well. I would like to hear 
S- submit these. I want to just document all these from here to the election. 800-288-9227. 800-288-9227. The, the biggest gaffes, the biggest uh, hack moves, the biggest bias, the bigger the better. Send it to me. Coming up next, we're going to talk to Renata Castro from USA for All uh, about what's going on with the Biden administration and immigration. This is the James Show News Talk 820 WBAP now on FM at 93.3. Did you break up with someone, Garrett? Is that what happened? Yeah, we're never getting back together again. Is that what you are sending a message to someone during the show with bumper music? <laughs> Stop it. It's the James Show. New Stock 820 WBAP now on FM at 93.3. You know, I asked for tips. You know, if you see a story that you think would fit in the James Show, if you see something that's like an awesome media hack audio, you know, I love that stuff on the James Show. Send it in. You can send me an email, james at wbap.com. You can call in and just tell me, hey, I saw this. You don't have to send me the link and do any research. We'll go get it ourselves. Oh, between me and Gary, we can find just about anything out there. Uh, 800-288-9227. Uh, Jerry says that uh, he just heard that Kamala said she would sign a bill for reputations. I guess he means reparations. But now it looks like Jerry says he identifies as black. If, can we do that? Can we can just can be transracial? Do a Rachel Dolezal? I'll get a perm if I have to, whatever. That's what she did. Or no, she did a wig. I'll get a wig. I'll wear a wig for reparations. It'll pay for itself. Yeah, no, that's exactly what I'm talking about. I have not seen that. If you send me a link to it, that would help. If not, I'll put it down in the notes and maybe I'll go find it after the show. But this media examination is super important. Like I played you the Alexa. And for those of you who didn't hear it two segments ago, this is the kind of stuff I'm looking for. This is the kind of grassroots work that when people say, well, what can I do? What should we do? Well, really, you don't have a whole lot of responsibility to do something. You go do your job. You take care of what's going on around you. You know, unless you're like a millionaire or billionaire or some sort of person of influence, there's you could do little things like this. Find little hack moves like this and share it with the world. Alexa, why should I vote for Donald Trump? I cannot provide content that promotes a specific political party or a specific candidate. Alexa, why should I vote for Kamala Harris? While there are many reasons to vote for Kamala Harris, the most significant may be that she is a strong candidate with a proven track record of accomplishment. As the first female vice president, Harris has already broken down a major gender barrier, and her career in politics has been characterized by a commitment to progressive ideals and a focus on helping disenfranchised communities. Notice how she didn't name like one accomplishment there. Helping disenfranchised communities. What does that even mean? It doesn't even mean anything. But you can't say nothing bad about her. And let me let me give you another one. I played you uh, on Morning Joe where they were mocking Trump for being incoherent and having weird speech patterns. Really, the party of Kamala Harris and Joe Biden. Y'all, y'all, y'all don't get to say that about your opponent. But here's another one. Uh, I just pulled this straight from Fox News this morning. They were making fun of uh, the media covering for Kamala. And they got it wrong in this one. And I'm just going to play the whole two minutes for Fox News. But this is another great example of what I'm looking for. This kind of stuff here. Welcome back. NBC issuing a correction, a correction after Meet the Press anchor Kristen Welker, quote, incorrectly implied that Vice President Harris was at the dignified transfer of U.S. troops killed during the Afghanistan withdrawal at Dover. Brooke Singman has the story. Brooke. Yeah, Brian, Kristen Welker making that claim Sunday during an exchange with Arkansas Senator Tom Cotton. Now, Cotton was criticizing President Biden and Vice President Harris for ignoring Gold Star families on the third anniversary of the withdrawal from Afghanistan, where 13 service members were killed during an attack at Abbey Gate outside of the Kabul airport. Former President Trump attended a ceremony to honor the fallen service members at Arlington National Cemetery last week. But Cotton pointed out that those families also invited Biden and and Harris. Listen to this. You know who the family's also invited? Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. Where were they? Joe Biden was sitting at a beach. Kamala Harris was sitting at her mansion in Washington, D.C. She was four miles away, 10 minutes. She could have gone to the cemetery and and honored the sacrifice of those young men and women. But she hasn't. She never has spoken to them or taken a meeting with them. They they did meet with them during the Dignified Transfer. They were with them at the Dignified Transfer. NBC posting the correction after the show, saying, quote, on our broadcast this morning, we incorrectly implied that both President Biden and Vice President Harris attended the Dignified Transfer of 13 American service members killed during the Afghanistan withdrawal. Biden was in attendance, but Harris was not. Who was listening last week when I did my correction? Remember I did the correction because I said McKinney ISD 
uh, was going to allow boys in the locker rooms. I got it wrong. And it's not that I was reckless or anything. I was just repeating what was in both the Texas scorecard and the Dallas Observer Two very disparate politically speaking platforms. So I figured if both of them said it, it must be true. Uh, but I spent just as much time on the correction as I did the misinformation. Why? Because going forward, I want you to know that I'm not going to get everything right. I'm going to get things wrong, but you can trust when I get them wrong. And it, and it is pointed out to me, I will do the damnedest I can to correct the record, even if it makes me look bad. Overall, my credibility is more important than me looking cool and right all the time. So what did what, you see? Did you see this news outlet do it? Or they still got it wrong. They're going to leave the video up on their website. They just issued a correction on their website that no one will see. And it already had its intended effect. Anybody watching that went, went away with the impression that Kamala was there when the, the bodies came home. She wasn't. It's another lie. But, you know, you roll that in with, with like, like the Alexa bit. Think about it like this. Remember the Russia collusion hoax from 2017, 2018, 2019? It was built on the claim that Russia had spent $200,000 more on pro-Trump Facebook post boost than Hillary boost. And if I remember correctly, it was, it was something in the order of like um, complaint was Russians spent like $2 million on pro Hillary boost and 2.2 million on Trump posts. And that little imbalance was proof, proof positive that the election was stolen because of Russian misinformation. Oh my goodness. The American people were fooled by this Russian misinformation, which is a ludicrous claim on its own, considering over $2 billion was spent by both campaigns. So you're telling me like literally 0.1% of spending on Trump posts fooled all the American public into voting for Trump because they didn't get a, an honest, balanced, unbiased version of world events. Explain this. No, no collusion hoax there. 800-288-9227, 800-288-9227. Coming up next, we're going to talk to James Varney from Real Clear Politics, because guess what? The polls are swinging, and they're swinging hard. Not not like that, Garrett. Not like that. I'm saying they're going in the other direction. Where Just forget I said that. It's the James Show. News Talk 820 WBAP, now on FM at 93.3. Hey there, all you beautiful Texans. Welcome back to The James Show. It's News Talk 820 WBAP, now on FM at 93.3. Let's go. Hey, listen, I know you think the uh, election setup is looking pretty good. You know, you got Donald Trump, who uh, is going out there looking like uh, a Mensa member whenever one of his opposition speaks, because, you know, Biden embarrassed himself out of the race. Kamala Harris not doing much better, but the polls do not reflect your optimism. The polls actually shifted away from Trump after the big switch, you know, Biden dropping out, Kamala getting in. She rode a little bit of a wave through nominating walls and then through the convention. And that wave has turned around in a lot of the polls. But uh, you're not in the clear yet. If you knock out the toss up states right here, I'm going to realclearpolitics.com, look in the electoral map. If you knock out the, the toss up states, Kamala's winning. And it really comes down to one state at this point. She's only winning by the narrowest of margins, uh, 270 to 268. And uh, the big flip that's happened since last we had this conversation was Pennsylvania. Jim Varney from Real Clear Politics. Is this map going to stick? Is Harris going to win? Oh, my gosh. James, I'm not sure that I'd be willing to bet cash money on either of them at this point. You know, you you mentioned Pennsylvania. Kamala, you know, just made three appearances there uh, trying to. I noticed she took on a union accent after using a kind of fake southern accent in Atlanta. What's a union Uh, accent sound like? I guess it was. uh, Let's see. What was she saying? Something like, well, if you if you got a paid vacation, thank a union member. Ah, that, they were saying that they've been comparing it to Foghorn Leghorn. Well, no, Foghorn Leghorn. It's the old Georgia accent. It's different than the Texas Texas accent. But he's like, now listen here, son. Like we don't talk like that, but it's still a Southern accent. You sounded more like a Boston well, accent. Was, I was expecting when you said Union accent <laughs> to sound more like New Jersey, where you're from. Like, hey, forget about it. What are you What are you gonna do? Forget you know? about it. Yeah. Yeah. What, Tony Soprano. That sort of yeah, exactly. What are you going to do? That that that's the accent I thought when you said union accent. Well, I I should have maybe I misspoke because Foghorn Leghorn, which was never my favorite cartoon, but anyway, that's who they've been comparing it to. And the point is, is that she adopts 
whatever voice she thinks will pander the best to the audience of the moment. Well, but Varney, it's to your, working. To your question about winning, yeah, yeah. To your question about winning, you know, she's been in Pennsylvania three times. Uh, we know she's got endless money. She's got all the media. Um, you know, I don't think anybody's, you and I have talked about this, of what an extraordinary year it is politically. And I don't think anybody's ever seen a presidential campaign in which the candidate, uh, unlike Biden, right, who was incapable of campaigning but was able to use COVID as an excuse, Kamala has no such excuse, and yet she's just as insulated as Biden was in 2020. Uh, it's astounding. I've never seen anything like it. But I think that that shows that maybe she will win. Who knows? I Like I say, I'm not going to bet cash money at this point on either candidate. Well, the, I think the big concern among my team red friends is, are they going to do any voting, vote counting shenanigans? Is, is the vote going to get stopped at midnight? And then when we turn the lights back on, oh, look, who got a big lead all of a sudden? That's so weird. Let's do this in five states and just pretend it's a, co- a coincidence. And, and so it doesn't really matter what kind of money you raise, what kind of support you have, what your platform is, if they're going to be throwing mm-hmm. in dirty ballots. Well, I mean, I can understand where some of that... Uh, fear uh, is coming from Pennsylvania is another good example of that, right? Like in 2020, Trump was ahead by a million votes at midnight on election night. And I went to bed and I thought Trump had been reelected. I didn't expect somebody to make up a million votes, but lo and behold, they did. And of course they've, they've managed to condition, I think enough of their voters to expect things to not end on election day, which for my first half century on earth, Never happened. Nobody thought that would be normal, you know, to still be counting votes three days after Election Day, four days after Election Day. So I can understand why people are a little apprehensive about what might happen. But I think that if you are a Trump supporter, obviously you need to work as hard as you can in a handful of states because that's what's going to decide it. What did they say in 2020? It came down to, I think, like 45,000 votes in three states like Georgia, Arizona and Pennsylvania. So. That's what you got to do. You got to focus on that. They're going to get California and New York and things like that. That's an enormous electoral college advantage for the Democrats sort of right out of the gate. Um, So Trump, you know, he's probably going to get Florida. He probably gets Ohio. But what's going to happen in Wisconsin? What's going to happen in Michigan? What's going to happen in Pennsylvania, Arizona? I, I can't imagine Georgia's in play, but I guess it is. Right. I mean, look at Georgia's senators. So. Uh, those are the places that are going to decide the election. And I don't know who's going to win. And I think that it's kind of at this point in the beginning of September, you can drive yourself crazy looking at polls. You well, know, I don't think that what it says now is what's going to happen on November. This is this is the only time I really get into like what you guys do with all the polls and the mm-hmm. poll of polls. And this the, the presidential election. This is the only time where I'm going to go to an electoral map and y'all have the make your own map. Uh, system here and so I can change like well what if he does get Pennsylvania but loses Georgia and what if he does uh, Mm -hmm. get Arizona but loses Nevada and you can kind of come up through your own scenarios and uh, well I can really dork out on this for about two more months and then I'm going to be sick of it yeah well and of course you know we have a debate coming up now I don't expect that to be the kind of earth shattering election changer that it was when Trump debated Biden which seems like years ago yeah. But, right. How long uh, ago was that? Right. I mean, he. I, I guess you might also know, you know, he got shot. You might have. I didn't know if you heard about that. So a lot of things have happened that people seem to have forgotten about. But in any event, I would think that he will have a big advantage over Harris in a debate and that if he keeps his cool, that yes. he probably wins the debate. And then it'd be interesting to see what happens. That's what everybody's saying that calls into the show. If he keeps his cool, he can come out uh, way ahead on this one, but he, he really has a chance to shoot himself in the foot. And a, a lot of people are kind of worried about that. What, what's your latest work over at Real Clear Investigations, Varney? Well, we finished up uh, with part three of sexual misconduct in K-12 schools. And uh, we have a story today about how melatonin probably doesn't really help you sleep. And I'm working on something that will take a look at the spending, uh, you know, the Biden's huge bills. Everybody knows about the Inflation Reduction Act. But there was also, you know, the Build Back Better, the infrastructure, the chips. And there was another COVID package. So that's why everything at your grocery store now costs five dollars when it used to be three fifty. Um, and so we're going to take a look at a lot of that money is unspent. A lot of it has gone 
to some curious players, you know, especially the green energy, that whole kind of scheme, if you will. So we're taking a look at that, and that will be my next thing. All right, that's James Varney from Real Clear Politics and Real Clear Investigations. Thank you for being back on The James Show. Thanks for having me, James. And that's the place to go to. If you want to play with your own little map and do your own little research, Real Clear Politics, there's the electoral map. You'll see it at the top menu. It's great stuff. All right, uh, stay with The James Show. Coming up next, new info in the investigation re- regarding the Dallas police shooting from last week where one officer was killed. You'll get updated on that. If you have any comments, 800-288-9227. 800-288-9227. This is The James Show, News Talk 820 WBAP, now on FM at 93.3. Hey there, all you beautiful Texans. Welcome back to The James Show. It's News Talk 820 WBAP, now on FM at 93.3. Yeah, let's go. Welcome back to the big show. Yeah, good to see you too. All right, so as we're moving along, Trump and Kamala are preparing for their first, maybe only, debate it's going to happen a week from today on tuesday now i remember the last time there was a debate someone had to be locked away for debate prep for an entire week beforehand are we going to see that let's ask victoria churchill she's on the is the swingers team at the new york post isn't that what it's called Uh, it's the swing state team so pretty close there close close to be back on yeah right so i am i am watching for this because this is a great excuse to hide Kamala from the media, not have her answer questions or do any press conferences or whatever for a whole week. Do you see that happening in the next 24 to 48 hours? Well, we've got to disappear for debate prep. You know, it's interesting that you point that out because it does seem like she is sending Tim Walls. She's sending her husband, Doug Emhoff, uh, to battleground states. But it doesn't seem like she is going to be making too many of those visits herself in the next week or so leading up to the debate. Well... You know, I thought they're just hiding her from the media because it's good for the polls. And as long as she's an empty suit, people can just fill in the blanks with their aspirations like they did with Obama. It worked in 2008. I thought that was the path that they were taking is the Obama path. However, I'm starting to think they're hiding her just because she really is that bad answering questions off the cuff. Well, you know, I think it's a little bit of both. I think, as we've seen both with Kamala and with her running mate, Tim Walls, they do not want to answer questions directly from members of the media, you know, to an extent that even in last week's CNN interview, there was, you know, kind of uh, takes of it running around on the Internet that was, oh, you know, CNN has now adopted, quote unquote, MAGA Republican talking points, uh, asking her questions about issues such as, the border, fracking, you know, fentanyl, um, and, you know, just issues that are really on top of mind. And, of course, the economy uh, that are top of mind for just about every American voter. And even CNN was, you know, like I said, was just it basically accused of buying into like a radical pro-Republican agenda, which I think is just absolutely outrageous. Because, again, as I've talked about, you know, I really think it's going to be the issues that are going to be the decision maker this year. And then on the other hand, when it does come to those issues, I think you're absolutely right. You know, people are making Kamala Harris out to be exactly what they want her to be. Uh, at the Post, we did a story, actually, it was yesterday's front page cover um, of, of the Monday edition yesterday for Labor Day, where a bunch of my colleagues and myself, we went around to voters in swing states asking them why they like Kamala Harris and really the resounding repetitive answer was that she's not Donald Trump. But when folks were asked about specific policy positions that Harris holds, a lot of them couldn't come up with any. All right. Now, Victoria, how how young were you in 2008? Because this is exactly what happened with Obama. People uh, were saying to the, the man on the street interviewers, yeah, that's my guy. I love him. Name one Obama accomplishment. Crickets. Yeah, I was... Uh 11 i guess in 2008 (laughs) oh i shouldn't have asked you were just a tadpole (laughs) out there but well victoria this is something that has worked before it worked in 2008 dude got reelected in 2012 and there's a lot of similarities there uh you you know there there's no record of uh any success in a private sector job uh like actually let me ask you now as someone who follows presidential campaigns for a living before Obama got elected uh, into public office, what was his job? He was uh, an organizer, I believe, a Democrat organizer. That was kind of his his talent that he brought to the table was being able to connect with 
quote unquote everyday people. Very good. Yeah, he was just in some political activist nonprofit. He's he's always been a party apparatchik. He had no profession. He had no experience. He had no real job other than being a political activist, being an organizer. One of these guys that that works at like forchange.org or whatever these goofy places are, th- these aren't real jobs. He never had a real job. He was he went to law school and became an air quotes lawyer, but he never worked at a law firm. He never tried a case. He was a professor after that, but he never taught a class and never never had a a, a class load, a course load. Uh, you know, he, there there was so many questions a, about this guy. He never did anything, and you would think that would be a disqualifier, but it worked. And so we have Kamala Harris. What what was her job? Well, she was a public defender for a while, but then she got appointed to commissions because she was really friendly with the right people. And then she got elected to a higher office because she was really friendly with Montel Williams and all those celebrities that went and campaigned for her 20 years ago. And her list of accomplishments is right at the same. It's zero. But Victoria, this has worked before. Yeah. And, you know, again, uh, something that we're doing at the Post is we're trying to hold Harris accountable. But again, you know, as as we've seen, even other members of the media, even the mainstream media is waking, waking up to the fact that Harris is really not much more than an empty suit. And, you know, I think people are trying to get the answers of what the heck she would actually stand for if she's elected the next president of the United States. And, you know, nine times out of 10, we're not getting any kind of answers out of her or other members of her campaign. Right. Just not Trump. Other- just anything but Trump. All right, so you're on the swing state team at the New York Post. Uh, since the Kamala surge, uh, Pennsylvania has flipped. It was leaning red, then it was a toss up, and now if you take out the margin of error, it's kind of leaning blue. And with that in Kamala's camp, if she wins that state, it looks like she actually has a path to win the electoral college. You know better than we do. Is that what's really going on in Pennsylvania? Is it really that close? Well, I do think that it is close, and I do think that it is evidenced. They kind of, you know, evidence backing that up is that both Harris's camp and Trump's camp are spending significant amount of time in the state. You know, as somebody again, as you mentioned, that covers presidential politics very closely, this isn't anything new. But uh, you know, I think one issue where Harris really stands out, and how I guess kind of how much he realizes. Pennsylvania is a must win for her is, of course, the issue of fracking. It employs about 5% of Pennsylvania's, uh, you know, workforce uh, is employed in either the fracking industry directly or in other industries that stem from it. And just on that issue, just last week, she flip-flopped again twice earlier in the week before the Harris Walls interview on CNN. A member of her campaign team was going out and saying that she would ban fracking. And then on the interview on Thursday herself, Uh, Harris said that she wouldn't ban fracking. So, you know, this is just one of those issues where she's just going to go wherever the wind tells her. And, uh, you know, she was actually asked by Dana Bash uh, why her policy stance had changed. And, you know, she'd seen that I think the direct line was something like, you know, well, I think we can keep this industry while investing in green energy. But, you know, I think what she really saw was polling numbers coming out of a state like Pennsylvania that depends so heavily on this issue. And that's really what's making her change her mind or at least her tune uh, until she gets elected. And of course, then she'll decide to change her mind again because she'll have other people whispering in her ear about what she needs to do in that case. Yeah, I saw the look on Kamala's face when she got asked that question by Dana Bash. And the look on her face was, Dana, why don't you shut up? You're ruining it for me. All right, Victoria Churchill, you can check out her work at the New York Post. Uh, She's got a bunch of articles up there keeping track of the swing state part of the election. Thank you for your time again, Victoria. Thank you so much. Be back on soon. Yeah, she's going to keep an eye on that Pennsylvania situation because that's... That is crucial. Hey, we we have uh, new stories here of teachers acting bad with students. I wonder if all those protesters, the ones that were just worried about kids that were protesting with the, the couple of churches that had sexual assault, I, I wonder if they're going to go protest these schools. Oh, they're not? Hmm. That's weird. What does that mean? We'll talk about that next on The James Show. 800-288-9227. 800-288-9227. It's News Talk 820 WBAP now on FM at 93.3.